Hello everyone, it's me, Andrew. I'm here at Star Cottage Studio in the bead room. Um, if you don't know what Star Cottage Studio is, it's the biggest project that Allegory Gallery has attempted. I guess it's more than attempted since we have it. Um, but yeah, it's the biggest project that we've done and we're super excited about it. Uh, and it keeps growing and changing and getting better and better every day. So hopefully you all are having a great Tuesday out there. Um, it's been a rainy Tuesday here. It's been super busy. Uh, we had meetings or I had meetings back to back and um, my last meeting ran a little bit late. And then I was trying to hunt down gold uh, uh, gold filled, um, crimp tubes. So I couldn't find them because everything was organized for the photo shoot, which means that things are all over the place and tucked away and hidden. And, uh, so eventually I'll find them, but yeah, so we're here now. Hopefully you all are having a great Tuesday and that it is beautiful and lovely where you are. Um, the temperature is really great here. It's not too hot, not too cold, but it is, like I said, a little bit rainy and overcast. So uh, those days always make me a little bit sleepy. Let's see who is tuning in. Hey, Julie. Hey, Harry. Uh, hey, Facebook user. It's raining in Miami. Um, I don't know who that is. I'm guessing it's maybe Sandra. She lives in Florida. Um, but if you want me to be able to see your name right here, um, all you have to do is in the description of this post, there should be a link and it allows permission for you to be able to um, see, allow me to see who you are. Otherwise, we're using StreamYard, so um, I don't always get to see who it is. So if you do that, generally speaking, you only have to do it once um, every so often. Sometimes it logs you out for security purposes, um, and then you just log back in. It's super easy. And then I can see who you are. Um, all right. Hey, Lorraine. Hey, Norma. Howdy, Sarah. Donna's watching. Hey, Donna. And Sharon's watching. Hey, Sharon. All right. So, yeah. Um, a couple of things going on. Joy is watching. Hey, Joy. Um, so there's a couple things going on, um, on, I'm trying to think of everything that's going on. So on Friday, I will be teaching at Contemporary Craft. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I think they got enough people, um, to run the class, but there's still space left. So if you are local to the Pittsburgh area, please come out and join us for the Craft and Draft at Contemporary Craft. Um, I think it's a really lovely thing that they asked a uh, BIPOC uh, LGBTQIA person, that's me, um, to teach during Pride Month. Um, you know, I think it's one of those things where you got to put your money where your mouth is. Um, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I, I love, I love gay people. Um, and then they support companies that don't have representation or actively work against um, the LGBTQIA community. So, you know, you know, I guess it is what it is. But if you know better, you can do better. And I think that organizations like Contemporary Craft are really, um, you know, demonstrating that it is possible to, you know, be authentic to what they're saying. So uh, I'm super excited to be able to teach there. Um, it is the first time that I'll be really officially teaching there. We did a family day there, which was really fun. Um, and this is actually an expanded version of the family day uh, 
um, project and goes into a little bit more detail about epoxy clay um, and using it in bezel settings and creating really fun mosaic pieces. So hopefully you all will join me on Friday. And then, and then, what? but wait, there's more. So then on Saturday, um, we're going to be set up at Touchstone Center for Crafts. That's in Farmington, uh, Pennsylvania, which is a, a little bit over an hour south of Ligonier, south-ish. Um, really, it's not as far as, say, touch uh, as contemporary craft is from where we are. However, the roads from where we live to Pittsburgh are relatively straight across. And then the road down to Touchstone is a little bit wavy gravy style. So, um, you know, it takes a little bit longer that way because you can't just like, you know, gun it and, you know, the speed limit is a little bit different. So anyways, uh, we'll be there on Saturday. I have been busy, busy, busy making my, uh, making, making, making. Hopefully uh, you all will like what I make because if I don't sell it at Touchdown, I'm gonna hopefully share it with all of you out there. Um, I've got a couple of different things. I've been toying around with um, making more more artsy pieces as opposed to more um, production, kind of like ready to wear stuff. Um, so hopefully it will be a good mix and people enjoy it. Um, I love Touchstone um, and I want to support them and everything they do because they are a really great and amazing organization. Um, I believe there are going to be some other vendors from the Allegheny's Metal Collective, which is pretty fun. It's, uh, if you don't know what the Allegheny's Metal Collective is, it's a group of metalsmiths all within 50 miles of Pittsburgh. So that's a big circle. That's how I'm involved because I don't live in Pittsburgh or the Allegheny's necessarily. Um, but so I'm involved with that. And also Acre Partners, which is um, uh, a really wonderful organization uh, that's fairly new. It's a collaboration between different nonprofits that are helping boost um, creative entrepreneurs in rural uh, areas. And the first rural area that they're tackling is Johnstown which is not technically rural uh, the way you would think it is, but it's definitely not um, like a major metropolitan city. Um, it's a small size city um, and it's only getting smaller, unfortunately. But um, the more artists involved, uh, the more artists that can move to the area, the better. It's a really wonderful place where there's a lot of opportunity to, for one, purchase buildings and, um, you know, grow your business that way. So um, we're super excited to be a part of the cohort, which is um, the group of artists who are taking advantage of all the things that they are putting together. We recently finished a photo shoot with Bridge Perspectives. Um, and so if you follow along my Instagram, which is at symbol Andrew T. Thornton, that's T-H-O-R-N-T-O-N 100, um, that's 100. Um, you can see some of those photos as we kind of, I'll trickle them in. And maybe we'll put some of the other posts. Um, I'll have, um, I'll send the link to William again so he can post some of his pictures. There's some really fun pictures. Um, it's funny because we were watching this show the other night um, and they put their faces like so close to each other. I was like, you know, I would be like uncomfortable if somebody put their face like that close to me, you know, it's like close talker time. You know, some people, they don't mind that. I'm like, oh, especially even before COVID when it was like six feet, I was like, whoa, where's the ruler? Where, where's Mary, where is Mary Margaret the nun with a ruler to make sure that we're 
you know, enough space in between. Um, well, yeah. So in some of the pictures, they they made our faces go so close. Um, and the pictures look good, but I'm like, y'all know the truth. This This would not naturally have occurred the way that it is pictured because I don't, I, I'm like, okay, that's, that's too close. I'm like, Babette, she puts her little paw up and she deflects my, my, my ravaging of her, her little fuzzy face while I kiss her. And Babette, if, if you didn't know, is a cat. So it's not anything weird. All right. I see lots of folks tuning in. Valerie says, beautiful, bright, sunny day here in Winnipeg Beach. Um, howdy, Valerie. Kathy says, hi, beautiful and sunny in Nova Scotia. Love it. Well, just as I mentioned that, the sun started peeking out. So maybe y'all are giving me good sun vibes. Um, Cynthia's watching. Hey, Cynthia. That's my sister. This... I'm going to eventually figure out how to use the, the camera on StreamYard. Um, this, that's my sister. Um, Suzanne's watching. Howdy, Suzanne. Um, Norma was saying that she would like to visit Nova Scotia one day. Me too. Um, and Janice is watching. Hey, Janice. All right. So... I talked about teaching a contemporary craft. Hopefully folks come and take that class so uh, that they ask me back. It would be really wonderful if it sold out. And then they're like, whoa, he sells out classes. Let's book him again so that um, we we have a sellout se uh, class teacher. That wasn't really that convincing, was it? No, but um, be like a teacher that can sell out their classes. Yay, hooray for making money. Um, and then, um, yeah, no, on Saturday, we're going to be there for the open house. So not only will there be um, a couple different vendors, there's not going to be too, too many vendors, but there are, there is going to be live music. There's going to be free food. There's going to be activities for kids. There's going to be all kinds of, of things going on. Plus, you'll get to see all of the studios if you've never been. So definitely, that's a cool thing. I love Touchstone. I try everything in my power to take as many classes as I can uh, now. I took as many classes as I could last year, um, and I was super happy. Um, this year, I'm not going to be able to take as many, but I'm going to try as hard. I'm going to shake that money tree so hard. Um, I got an edu I recently, I can tell you now, um, officially, I got an educational endowment scholarship from SNAG. Um, and I'm going to be using that scholarship to take a class, uh, with Harlan Butt on Cloisonne and, um, enamel. And then I'm also going to be taking a class with Tanya Crane, um, who's also doing an enameling workshop at Touchstone. So I'm super excited about that and hopefully um, applying that to my own work. Because um, I'm really interested in surface embellishments. Um, I come from a background of painting and mixed media. So I love color and I love paint and I love the things that you can do with those things. So I'm super excited about expanding that skill set. Um, so yeah. All right. Kathy says, I'm on Long Island and it's been pretty nice today, but rain is moving in probably from where from me, where it's like moving across the state and into Long Island. Um, which we were in Connecticut on the way back from Rhode Island. And I didn't realize that where we were, we were in this little charming little town called Stonington. It's right across the water from Montauk, which is Long Island. And I didn't realize it was so close. I guess it's not that really that close unless you have like a boat. Um, but, uh, it, it, you know, I, the, it kind of like makes sense, I guess. 
You know, I guess my geography is a little bit warped in my mind where I think that everything's like super spread out. Um, and then when you get to areas like that, it's, it's a lot closer. And like, I guess that makes sense. Cause I used to take the train up to go to New Haven, um, to take, um, to see stuff at Yale, um, and visit with people who are going there. And it didn't take that long, but in my mind, Connecticut and New York are like super far apart, even though they're not. So, um, I guess I'm spatially challenged. I don't know. But um, yeah, so uh, we were there and it was super cute. And then I was like, oh, I want to go to Long Island again. It's been a couple years, a couple over a couple years, it's been a decade plus. But I, ha I always had a good time. I used to go to um, Southampton. Um, there's a wonderful little art center there. And I used to do this residency through the school that I went to. And um, they would take us to artist studios in Long Island. Um, and it was super cool because you would see all these like super famous people. Um, and then you go in their studios and take a look around. So I got a chance to talk with Cindy Sherman and go into Ross Blechner's studio um, and April Gornick and Eric Fischel. And, and if you don't really follow along with contemporary painters and, or in photographers and stuff, you're probably like, who's he talking about? But they're, they're pretty famous or well-known people in the art world. So it was super exciting for me. I was a little bit fangirling out a little bit. Um, and uh, it was super cool to see where where the magic happens, so to speak. All right, Terry's on. Hey, Terry, how's it going? Janice says, congrats on your award. Thanks. I tried hard. Helen's watching. Howdy, Helen. Um, Kathy says, we can see Connecticut on a clear day across the sound from our house. That sounds nice. Kathy says, N the other Kathy, Kathy and other Kathy, Norma Frank, come for a visit. It's best in the summer. Whale watching, beach adventures, fishing, sailing, lots of things to do. I want to go too. Um, one of our friends is from around that area originally. So I'm like, I watched the shipping news once. And then there, she's like, uh-huh. It's more than just that. Um, Anyways, so speaking of being next to the water, next to the ocean, which I love, I love to be next to the ocean, um, and somehow we ended up, um, and it's not like a big mystery, but we're in southwestern Pennsylvania, and that's where Williams people are from, but um, I love to be near the water, especially salt water. So I can't swim very well, but um, I still like it. Um, and Cynthia, she can testify that I beat, I love to beach comb. I love to look for things in the beaches and the tide pools and looking for little lost treasures. Um, and so, yeah, I would love to one day, maybe someday have a place next to the water. Um, and that would be nice. But, you know, one day, someday, you know, put it in your mind and maybe it will make manifest. There was a point when Star Cottage Studio didn't exist and I was going through memories on my Facebook page and I was going through different posts that I had put, put up and things that I kind of dreamed about one day having. And here we are. I'm sitting, sitting and living in the dream. So I'm super excited about that. All right. So let us flip the camera around. So you'll see the ceiling for a moment or two. And then what I'll do is we'll, we'll get cracking and work on this project. How about it? Who's ready? All right.
here we go. Now let me try to make this look a little bit better. And I'm gonna raise up my chair so I can actually see what's going on, but not too high because I don't wanna fall down the mountain. All right, so for today's project, we're going to use one of our gold-plated um, pewter toggles here. This is a part of the Allegory Gallery Fine Pewter line that we recently acquired. Um, if you go to the website, that's allegorygallery.com, um, you can see the full selection of our Fine Pewter charms in, uh, and eventually we'll add pictures of all the different finishes but they come in antique gold, antique silver, um, antique copper, and all kinds of goodies like that. Um, and there's hundreds of designs, and I hope you all will take advantage of them because they're priced really well right now. One of my goals for this year is, and probably sooner than this year, is to raise some money so that I can get the casting up and going. Um, part of our trip to Rhode Island was to check out one of the casters in there who is a, uh, who previously produced uh, the line. Um, unfortunately, they were temporarily closed. So that kind of was less than great um, news when we went there because we were super excited about going and checking the place out and kind of making in-person connections, but uh, that didn't happen this time. So hopefully they'll be back up and running soon. Um, if not, then we've got to go back to Rhode Island, which is not, uh, not a bad thing. I really enjoyed our visit there and hopefully we'll get to go out um, and enjoy it again. Um, and we really enjoyed where we stayed. We stayed with an Airbnb um, and the Airbnb was owned by a gay uh, ceramicist who did yoga. So we got to stay there. It was a really beautiful home, beautiful gardens, beautiful sculptures. And then before we went on the road on Sunday, we were treated to a free yoga class. So that was super awesome. Got nice and stretched out um, and blissed out before... Um, driving the way back. And I think that helped because I had uh, spoken previously the day before. Um, and um, yeah, I was a little bit tense from that. So it was nice to kind of do it. But you could hear my bones cracking like a, like a bag of popcorn. Like... Um, and so that, well, maybe not that quickly. It was more like popping. Um, but so it was really good. So I'm excited to go back and hopefully we will be able to go back again. All right. So not only, let's see here. Um, so we've got our toggle here. We're going to use some of our charms. I've got these charms. Uh, this is going to be a relatively short video today. So uh, the project is going to be a little bit more simple than normal, I guess. Um, and that's because we're, I'm a little bit pressed for time. I'm getting ready for that show on Saturday. So I need to bust a move and get cranking out some things. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to raid what we have um, at the store, and I'd like to show some new stuff, um, you know, so I've got to get back to making things. So we've got our fine pewter toggle, we've got our fine pewter um, starfish charms that are gold plated. I love it. It's an antique gold, which really brings out the details, I think. And then for the main part, um, are these really beautiful old stock freshwater pearls and they feel just so lovely. Um, I don't know if these are on the website or not yet. Um, I know they're in the physical store um, 
And at some one point, we added some pearls to the online store. Um, but I don't know if the, the sister strands to this did or not. I know we did a big, long video. Um, and uh, it was a Facebook Live at Five event where we went through hundreds and hundreds of strands. Um, and yeah, so these are some lovely, luscious freshwater pearls. Um, if you didn't see in the great bead extravaganza in the trendsetter report, July, the trend for July is pearls, I think, or maybe, I don't know. I can't remember if they, if we published it yet, maybe it's June. Or maybe I'm doing some, I'm, I'm letting the cat out of the bag. Sorry, y'all. Um, so we planned it out. If you didn't see all right. Oops. Sorry. Don't look, Sarah. Um, no, but we, um, the first trend report that we did was on check glass flowers and leaves. And the next one was on base metal components. Um, and so... And then the one after that is going to be on pearls. But I don't know if I'm supposed to tell that or not. Um, anyways, maybe it's for June. I can't remember. Anyway, so here we are. So, oh, Marianne says June is pearls. Okay, so good. I didn't let anything out. So, We've got our base metal. And what, uh, one of the things I should also mention is that just because the trend report, we're doing these monthly, um, doesn't mean that the trend ends in a month. These are things that we've been noticing um, are um, becoming popular and that's through social media and different things. Um, all of the presenters, we keep our ear to the ground, so to speak, especially, you know, some of us have been uh, doing this for a long time. Jill McKay, she used to write trend reports for different magazines and corporations. Um, and I did too, a little bit. Um, and uh, like we would go out to Tucson and scout different things and then write things up about what's coming, what's hot next. Um, and so we're taking all those years of experience and kind of uh, letting y'all in on some different things that we've noticed. Um, some of the folks have, are putting together kits and some of the folks are doing all different kinds of things. Uh, like they're bringing back some projects that have been in their vault. Um, some people are doing product launches and releases. So yeah, there's lots of lovely things that we're trying to do. Um, to keep folks engaged in the Great Bead Extravaganza, um, we do events periodically throughout the year, usually about four for our main events and then smaller events in between. Um, and then the trend reports are kind of like the in-between of that. So if that makes any sense. But that way people can kind of uh, see what we're thinking, and hopefully if that aligns with your sensibilities, um, you'll enjoy that extra effort. Um, and share some of your work in the, in the albums there on the Great Beat Extravaganza group. If you haven't seen that before, I do recommend that you check out um, the Great Beat Extravaganza group, and not the page. Uh, the group, um, the page is kind of like for business announcements, and then the group is more um, an informal place to share different things. Um, and it's kind of where we got our start. So anyways, check that out. We're going to be working with pearls today and some lovely base metal components from Allegory Gallery. Um, for today's tools, we're going to need some crimping pliers. We're going to need some cutters. We're going to need, I like to use um, these chain nose pliers to manipulate the flexible beading wire. Um, and speaking of flexible beading wire, where I'm going to use some of this flexible beading wire that was in my um, bead trade um, kit. Um, we're also going to need some jump rings. I've got different color jump rings or different kinds of jump rings. I have this whole thing for me to pick from. 
But I also have these texture jump rings, which I think are, are really fun. Um, and we'll see if they fit into the bail of the charms. So I think that'll be fun. We'll also have a piece of string or cording, and this is so that we can measure our wrists. Now, bracelets are tricky. I'm not gonna lie. And then one of the reasons why they're tricky is that depending on how they're constructed, um, they can be very specific, especially if you're using a toggle. If you don't have the right measurements um, with a bracelet using a toggle, Chances are you will no longer have that bracelet because it will fall off and you will you will look for that bracelet and maybe you'll never find it again. Um, especially if you speak with your hands or you you like power jog where you know you you do your arms, um, you know, that active motion. Um, you know, like karate chop. Um, but anyway, so uh, it's really important to get your fittings uh, of your bracelet, especially with a toggle, uh, done and done well so that it's nice and secure and doesn't come loose. Now, if you are worried about it coming loose, you can always swap it out for a lobster claw. Um, some people like to have magnets. Um, if you do have a magnet one, I do recommend you uh, putting an extender chain because I've seen where, um, for whatever reason, the magnets come undone um, and people will lose their bracelets. So um, even for super strong magnets. So uh, that's just something to be mindful of. I think bracelets are, um, I love bracelets and I wear bracelets all the time, generally. Um, and when I leave the house, that is. Um, but they are a little bit tricky to size. So just keep that in mind. You know, it's like with rings. Rings have to be a certain size or they don't fit and people won't want them, you know? So whenever I make rings, I try to make a big assortment of sizes and I try to do uh, the most popular sizes so that they're, uh, you know, so they're relatively good sellers. All right? So I've got that string, and then we'll also need um, crimp tubes. In theory, I have crimp tubes here somewhere. Somewhere, oh, here they are. Now these ones, I looked all over for the gold ones, but I couldn't find them. So I'll have to use the silver ones. And um, it, I'll put crimp covers over them later. Um, generally, I just leave my crimps uh, uh, uncovered, well, sometimes. It depends on the design, um, but generally speaking, I just leave them exposed, um, and uh, so I try to match my metals. Um, I guess you could call this a mixed metal thing, but if that's the only thing that's mixed, it, it kind of... Um, it doesn't look intentional is what I'm saying. Um, there was, uh, we were joking about mixed metals in my last presentation during the bead trade. And somebody says, it's called mixed metals, Andrew. Um, and I love mixed metals, but I feel like if you use mixed metals, it should look like you are trying to use mixed metals and not that you ran out of, uh, whatever component that you're trying to use, if that makes any sense. Um, Julie said, my magnets attach purse, purse hardware and bracelets fall off. See, I'm not the only one that that's happened to. Um, the other thing with magnets that I, I definitely 100% think that they're super useful and are really cool and you can do different things and they do have their perks. However, uh, people don't think about this, but magnets can be dangerous. Um, and they can be dangerous for little kids. Um, Max, when he was a baby, he swallowed some rare earth magnets and they connected in his stomach and he had to have surgery um, to remove those magnets and he almost died. So, um, 
you definitely and that was like a uh, oh my goodness it was uh it happened in june so we're coming up on i don't know six years maybe that that happened maybe more eight years um that he swallowed the magnets um maybe more than that because he was really little but anyways so be careful make sure that if you have small little ends around that they don't swallow the magnets because uh it's super dangerous um the other thing is that if people have a pacemaker on the other end of the spectrum um it can make the people go into arrhythmia if it uh if the magnet is strong enough it can uh, make the the pacemakers malfunction. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I think they're really cool if you don't want to put holes in your clothes and different things like that. And they're great for um, for certain things, but you definitely have to use them uh, knowing the cons as well as the pros. That's like most things, I guess, at least for me. I think it's always good to know the pros and cons of everything. And then you can use your good judgment to lead you forward. Okay, so that's just a little PSA for you um, and your jewelry making friends. Um, I want you and your loved ones to be around for a long time. So I don't want you to... Uh, unintentionally endanger yourself or others around you. So just keep that in mind. Um, all right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this string. And this is actually a piece of soft flex that um, I had laying around from a necklace that I took apart. Um, so I'm just going to use this really quick to measure my wrist. So I'm just gonna take that around and see how long it is. Um, somebody was saying, well, once you know your wrist size, it doesn't change. I don't know about you, but I have changed on my body. Um, so, you know, uh, yeah, that's a, I, you know, sometimes there's this one lady that came in the store and she got so mad because the rings wouldn't fit on her hand. And she's like, but I'm a seven. And I was like, well, it's hot. And you, and you went out to lunch and ate a bunch of salty food and your fingers swell. It's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. I actually have two sets of rings that I keep and, and not really necessarily two sets of rings, like identical rings, but I have winter rings and I have summer rings uh, that I wear for when there are different conditions. I find that in the winter, my hands um, aren't quite as swollen. And if I wear my summer rings in the winter, sometimes they fall off. So, um, yeah. Anyways, so don't get hung up on those numbers. Just roll with it. You know, we're beautiful creatures in our own ways, and there's no need to to get frantic over it. All right, so I've measured out my wrist size, and what I'm going to do is, before I go too, too much farther, I'm going to m match up the ends of my soft flex and my cord and I'm going to trim it. Now, I like to give myself an inch on both sides, so it's a little bit longer, um, but I like, I like to have extra to work with. When I first started working with stringing, I used to be super frugal with my flexible beading wire. Um, I tend to go for the best, um, and generally the, I don't want to say the most expensive thing that I can afford at the time, but I do think that I invest and I'm trying to invest in the most quality materials that I can afford. So sometimes it was a little bit more pricey, um, and cause I wanted it to last longer. And, um, so I would try to be super frugal with it. 
And I would drive myself crazy trying to get this tip back into the, into whatever, into the crimp tube and working with like, you know, the teeny tiny little bit. And I would drive myself crazy and it would take hours and hours to get this one thing back into there. And then I realized that if I spent about six cents more worth of material that I'll end up trimming, uh, you know, I can save myself a lot of headaches and heartaches by just adding that little extra bit of material. And then that way I can, um, you know, not go crazy trying to put it, that back through the crimp tube, which we're going to do now. All right. So I've got my crimp tube and I'm going to center this so you can actually see what I'm doing on the camera. I'm going to take my flexible beading wire and I'm going to pass it through my crimp tube. And then I'm going to put it through one half of my toggle and the bail on the toggle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that end back through the crimp tube. All right. Now this is medium. That is this one. This is a medium 0.014 in diameter. And if you wanted to use one of their magical crimpers, you could definitely do that. Um, since I'm going to eventually cover this, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use my regular crimping pliers. Now, crimping pliers have two notches. There's the one closest to your hand and the one closest to the tip. Now, the one closest to your hand makes the taco, and the closest to the one to the tip closes the taco up. So I'm going to make sure that my um beading wire is parallel to one another and i'm going to go to the one that's closest to my hand and i'm going to press firmly now if you have a longer crimp tube like maybe one of the two uh two by three crimp tubes this is a two by two crimp tube um you may have to go in sections if your crimping plier is not wide enough to crimp it the whole way across but you can see here Maybe there I made the taco. Now I'm going to turn the taco on the side. Um, and then I'm going to use the, the, the little, um, the, the indentation closest to the tip. And I'm going to close that up using that. Just like that. Easy peasy, easy peasy. And it's going to be nice and firm. And this is going to be super strong. All right. Now what I'm going to do, some people leave that. But what I found is, generally speaking, that little tip sometimes falls out of the bead that we had intended, and it can poke you in the back of the neck or in the wrist. So I'm just going to put this away from my eyes and trim it. So it's nice and flush. And people are like, aren't you worried that it's going to come apart? I've made probably thousands and thousands of bracelets and necklaces using this method and they rarely if ever come apart the only ones that that really were issues were when uh circumstances where people were like got things caught and pulled really hard that i've had to do repairs so generally speaking uh you do, it's super secure and also um i know some people they just smash their crimps but imagine it like this if i just hold your hands like this you can pretty much pull like if i grabbed your arm and i just grabbed it like this you could it would hold you know initially but eventually you could wiggle your arm out and um get free however if i grab you real hard like this then i can hold on a lot easier than if you than this so basically when you crimp your crimp tubes and you use your crimping pliers it grabs on and holds on for dear life and it will allow and your jewelry will last longer all right and as Facebook user said, bracelet sizes change based on the circumference of the beads. So I always like to um, 
give myself a little bit of extra in case I need to account for larger bead sizes. Um, so I'm just going to trim these freshwater pearls and start. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test out and see if these um, textured jump rings fit my charms. And if they do, I'm going to use them. If they don't, I'm going to get some other ones. But I'm going to open them up and do that. Maybe. I don't. These ones might be soldered. Well, pumpernickel. Yeah, these are soldered. So I won't be using these today. Um, that's okay. I'll save those for a project for another day. Instead, I'm going to get these jump rings I got here. These are kind of a matte gold. I love matte gold. They're a little bit of a different hue, but that's okay. And I'm just going to open and close these and hopefully these fit. They do, and I'm going to close that back up. Now, you may be wondering about jump rings. If you are new to making jewelry, um, I'm just going to go over opening and closing a jump ring real quick. Now, a jump ring is like so, and if you pull your jump ring apart, you're going to distort the shape of your jump ring and chances are it will never be a perfect circle again and it may or may not come loose. You're also creating a weak point here where that ring is being flexed back and forth. It's kind of like when you go back and forth over a pop tab on a soda can and um, you know eventually it will be become brittle and break. So if you open and close these enough like this, eventually this is going to break. Um, but before that, it will get distorted and then it will be no good. So you'll hold one side stationary. I like to hold it with a plier or, or a crimper or whatever, just as long as it doesn't get marred up. And then I'll use my other pliers to manipulate it and pivot it like so. So it will pivot like this. And then if it's open up, then you can slip on whatever you're trying to slip on. Then you just slip it back in place and it will lock in place. Now, if there's a gap, what you do is you open it up, squeeze it closed. So it's over squeeze, just a, a smidge. And then you'll pop it back and then it should lock into place like so. All right. So that's opening and closing jump rings 101 for you all. So I'm going to repeat the process again, all right? And I'm going to just go close these up. And I always like to do a little squeeze like that. I don't think it actually does anything, but um, in my mind, it makes it tighter, so... I'm just gonna go with that and allow it to be. All right, and then you just close that back up. All right, so easy peasy, opening and closing jump rings. It's one of the fundamental skills that you'll use as a jewelry maker. And um, I think that that will, will greatly increase your happiness. Now, when I've got this piece, you can always um, use your piece um, to gauge how many beads you'll need. Um, sometimes if you have one of those bead boards, bead boards with measurements, you can also get the estimate that way as well. Now keep in mind, we have to factor in um, our toggle as well. So I'm going to give myself about an inch for that so it will probably be about this big um and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to lay these out like so maybe that's a little less so lay those out 
and then kind of guesstimate. I can count these up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, so that means that I'm going to go in 2, 4, 6, 8. So that's a center bead. So I'm actually going to want to do an even number for this because I want these to fall in between. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that will, I'll put that there. And then this will be one, two, three, four. And then there, one, two, three, four. There we go. All right, so that's kind of what the bracelet will look like in theory. Now, I always, with string projects, I kind of give myself what I call grace. And what I mean by that is, like, I can have an idea for a project that I want to do. But generally speaking, I if it doesn't work out, I try not to get overly upset about it. I know when I first started making out, I wanted things to work out just so. And if they didn't work out, I would, uh, you know, be very upset and I'd be like, oh, how come it didn't work out and all this other stuff. But the thing is, is sometimes things just don't work out that way. And you kind of have to roll with it. And I feel like that way, it's a little bit better for your mental health. And plus, you're, once you aren't committed to one idea, then you can move on to a new idea and create solutions to fix the problems. So um, if that is a concern, just keep that in mind. All right. So I strung up my charm, and I'm going to string up some more of these pearls. Now I'm gonna test it. I generally like to put spacers in between my pearls so they don't rub against each other. Um, but I'm gonna just see how it looks without the spacers first and then see if I like it. And if I like it, then I'm just gonna roll with it. And if I don't like it, then I'm gonna add, take it apart and um, add spacers in between. So it's a nice thing that, you know, nothing is set in stone. Uh, when you can kind of play around with things uh, beforehand to make sure you like it and then test it out. And if you like it, you can uh, keep going. If not, then take it apart and change it up. You know, you are in control. You are the master of your own story. You are con in control of your own destiny. And you get to make the decision about what is right for you, and you can do it. So, yes. All right. Let's see how, what y'all think so far. Um, yeah, I like that. I like the colors. Lorraine says, beautiful color pearls. Thanks. I see I'm getting little angry faces. Um, I don't really know what that's about, but, um, if not, you know, if you don't like it, you can stop watching. That's an option. It won't hurt my feelings. It doesn't hurt my feelings if you add the angry faces. Um, so I'm just going to keep going and stringing up my pearls on this bracelet. And I'm almost done. And I'm going to test it out to see if how this looks. All right. I'm going to make sure that I get the, the right um, size for my piece. Now, I may have uh, underestimated and given myself too few to work with. So uh, I gave myself enough beading wire, but I didn't put enough pearls. All right. So I'm going to go back and 
add some. Now, if I add spacers to this, um, it will also kind of take up some of that. Um, oh, Kathy said it's accidental angry. Oh, no worries then. Thank you for uh, your emoji love, I guess. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I like this. It's pretty. I think I will maybe add a couple of spacers. I'll think about it. Hmm. What to do? What to do? Hold on one moment, please. I've got these metal seed beads here, and these are a size six yellow brass. I'm gonna lower my chair just a wee bit. Now, one thing that I like about these um, uh, metal seed beads is that they do have a seam. So if you need to use them as a um, if you need to use them as a, a crimp cover, you can. So all you have to do to make that happen is you get some fine tipped um, needle nose pliers, uh, chain nose pliers, and you insert them in. And these are a little bit too big for that, but you insert them in and then you, you, you let the, the springing action of your pliers gently open it up and then you flip it over onto the other side and repeat, and that will be hopefully enough for your, your uh, bead to open the seam up enough that you can fit it over your crimp tube. So if you don't have any crimp covers, but you do have these seed beads, you can get away with it. But I'm just going to, it'll fit over this one if I slide it like so. All right. So that'll cover that up. See? Um, and so I'm just going to string these up again. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, again. But, you know, that's the way it is with designing. Sometimes you can it will work out in your mind conceptually, but in actuality, it will need a little something. And I think this is actually a good thing. Like I, I think that the pearls look good, but it needed a little bit of a break in it. You know, I think that there, I, it was a little bit too color blocked, which is a nice look and I liked it, but I am liking how the beads are the the metal beads are reacting to pearls now when i get to the charms i'm just gonna i'm gonna test it out to see if i like it where it's in between just two pearls or if i should put a, a spacer in between or what so here is one option and I think I, I kind of like that. So I'm going to roll with that. Um, and the other option is to put something in there. The thing is, is that this will not sit in between two, um, two beads, but it could sit over one bead. So the question is, do you let it sit over the bare wire or do you sit it over a bead? Uh, I'm going to go with a bare wire just so that it does give a little bit more visual weight. Um, so there you go. All right. So I'm going to keep stringing this up. And um, yeah, people are like, oh my gosh, this is like paint, watch them paint dry. No, they're not actually saying that. But in my mind, that's what's happening. Because like, it's not like stringing beads is, I love stringing beads. And I love, like I used to, 
write for stringing magazine and i love stringing beads it's one of my favorite things to do it's very meditative and i love it however it's probably not one of the most exciting things ever like it's not like when the solder just flows you know um there isn't like you know as much excitement but that's all right not everything has to be wild and, and crazy. Um, and if, you know, if you don't like this, then you can wait till the replay and then fast forward through the uh, stringing of the beads. But I like it. I think it's a good thing. And I think it's good to be open and flexible about your choices. Because if you find that something else works better, then you're not like sold on one specific idea. You can kind of play around and give yourself the grace to do that. Because otherwise, you know, I, I've been in situations where I have, um, where I haven't, and I've definitely made myself crazy trying to force something that wasn't meant to be. So. Um, Janice says, love the spacers. And Teresa said, this would look lovely as an anklet. It would. And I think pearls are one of those things that you do have to be mindful of with their care. So if you have any like super t um, harsh soaps, um, you probably will want to skip, you know, just take it off real quick and wash your hands. Um, with since these are base metal components, I generally will take my jewelry off when I go to the bathroom just so that it's not having all those caustic chemicals coming in contact with them. And um, yeah, you know, um, pearls though, they look better and better the more that your uh, the natural oils in your skin have reactions. Now, if you're going to go swimming in the pool, um, you know, maybe take them off because eventually that chlorine in the water will, um, you know, it will dull your pearls and make them less lustrous. However, the natural oils in your skin will make your pearls shine and gleam. So... Again, I miscalculated, and I'm going to have to go back. I think what I'm going to do, instead of stringing everything, everything up again, I'm just going to string, add one pearl to each segment. How about that? So, like I said, it's a trial and error thing. And some people are into it, and some people are like, oh my gosh, this is tedious. How many times are you going to do it? Um, and in my mind, I will do it as long and as many times as necessary to get the design right so that the fit is right and so that, um, you know, so that it looks right. Because sometimes the fit will be right, but the mechanics of how it fits together are off. And then it looks a little bit like, you're like, what? What's happening here? Uh, another thing that you can do, which I think is a pretty fun way to add texture is if you have chain, you can cut uh, segments of chain and kind of fold them into each other and string it through and cluster it together. And it can look like a stack of jump rings and add a little bit of visual texture. So if you wanted to do that, you could definitely do that. Um, if, you, if you're like, oh, that's too simple. I need more, more razzle-dazzle. There's a lot of things that you can do to make it a little bit more festive. And really, it's up to you about how simple or how complex you make your designs. Uh, when I first started di designing for jewelry magazines, uh, they were really interested in all of these, uh, using a lot of components from a lot of different manufacturers. 
So that way they could sell advertisements. You know, they're like, oh, your project was featured in blah, blah, blah. Um, blah, blah, blah's design. And Andrew's design, would you like to buy an ad? Um, and, you know, sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. But so with my pieces, I would kind of, uh, for the magazines, I would make them, uh, they would always be like something different. I would try to make them different somehow. So I would do like add a weird lark said not somewhere or uh, use an unconventional material that you would pick up in your hardware store or do something that was different. Um, and it's cool. Like I like that aesthetic that I did. Um, I thought it was fun. People seem to enjoy it. Um, I got in a lot of books and magazines. I'm probably in over 30 different magazines, probably more than that. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, it's cool. However, sometimes what I love is just simple, strong beads. I mean, there's something about, about that kind of headspace that you go into when you're stringing beads. And it's almost like a storyteller's art where I feel like I could tell stories as long as I'm just stringing beads, which is what I'm doing now. And hopefully you like it. And if not, oh, wow. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I'm stringing up beads. Hopefully you like it. I like it. I love Simply Strung stuff. And it just makes, it's just, I, there's just something about how there's a rhythm to the beads and a texture to the beads and tax tactile quality to the beads. And um, I just love it. So Stringing will definitely have my heart forever. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's true. I do love them. All right, so we've come to the end. I'm going to test it, and it seems like I added too many beads. All right, oh, wow. We're going to have to figure this out where... I think we're, let me see. That's not too bad of a fit if I take it off, one off. So do you think there's one bead that was, I added three beads because I added one, two, three, four. So it'd be four beads and it made it too long that way. All right. So once you get your fit down, which is, I could use this, make, make it a little bit tighter. The other nice thing is that because these are on jump rings, in theory, I could take them off after I finish it if I'm unhappy with the placement. Um, so I like it the way it is right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my crimp tube, I'm gonna place it in here, and I'm going to put this back through the, the clasp toggle bar and pass it through. And um, I'm gonna take my pliers and pull it gently, not too hard that it makes it like a ribbon. And then I'm gonna make sure that they're not crossing. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a flexibility test to make sure that um, the beads are gonna comfortably wind. I don't want it to be so tight that it's stiff and hard to bend like a bookmark. I want this to have flexibility. Um, Soft flex is all about having that nice kind of, um, uh, movability to it. So um, you want to make sure you build that into your piece. All right. And um, before you close it up, which I just did, um, I always like to measure it and make sure that the fit is right. And that, um, that it doesn't come off. 
And so I do a little shake test to make sure it doesn't come off. And then I'll go and close it up. But I already closed it up. So you just have to imagine it that I did that before I closed the crimped up. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go up in there and I'm going to trim it. And there you go. And work that in there over that, that crimp tube. So there'll be a little bit of space in there, which is nice. All right, done. What do y'all think? Um, let me see. There's a lot of comp. Um, Jody says, I would rather do it over and over to make it perfect instead of just settling. Luckily, stringing is easy to do. I agree. Sometimes simple is better. I agree. Terry says, I watched a Greatest Biggest Mistakes video the other day. I believe on the Softflex video YouTube, it was fantastic when over leaving spaces for your bracelet to move and flex. Yeah, it's a, I think it's an important thing to do. Um, Jody says, I love this bracelet. Thanks. Marion says, the pearls are gorgeous. And I think that's one of the things. Like, if you use really beautiful materials, sometimes you don't actually have to do that much. It's like cooking. Like, if you go to these really fancy restaurants, sometimes they will have a simple preparation preparation of uh, an ingredient, but the ingredient is so good that all it does, all it needs is that simple preparation. It doesn't need all these foams and cooked in a sous vide pouch and then uh, cooked with a laser and then uh, gilded with gold leaf and whatever. Sometimes all you need is just a simple preparation and it just makes those in, those raw ingredients sing. And if you have those raw ingredients and their quality ingredients, they really, uh, that's all you need, really. I mean, if you want to have all the tricks and gimmicks and stuff, that's cool, too. I support you and your choices in doing that. Um, and, yeah. So now if you didn't have, if you didn't have this, this class and you wanted to have, um, an alternative that had, um, a lobster claw, one thing that I do is I'll take the little seed beads and I make a beaded loop and then I'll take my lobster claw and, um, have that connect to that beaded loop. And that's a decorative way that you can have um, your piece be a little bit more sturdy if you're concerned about the toggle coming loose. Um, all right. Suzanne says, very nice. Thank you. Lorraine says, love it. Bonnie says, so pretty. Terry says, I love it. Julie says, that's really lovely and beachy. Um, Teresa says, love this so much. Uh, Marianne says, you don't have to use all your techniques on every piece. Correct. So really, you just have to do what you want to do also. Like if you want to make this multi-strand, you could have this multi-strand. That would, would be fairly easy to do and look nice also. Like if you wanted to have just a strand of these freshwater pearls and with no spacers, you know? The only thing that gets tricky with multi-strands on toggle bracelets is that you have to have enough room for your toggle bar to pivot. So generally speaking, I'll put a smaller bead uh, by that point of connection so that it will have room to flex and move. But I think that that could be cool too if you wanted to add another trick. Or if you wanted to do a, a whole little, a whole uh, um, multi-strand of just these spacers, that could look really cool too, you know? It's up to you, y'all. 
but or you could do both, you know? Nothing says you have to, if you wanted to add a little bit more razzle-dazzle and you wanted something a little bit more extra, um, you could do that as well. Now, I did do a design back in the day where I would take these bracelets and I would use the same component, the same toggle, on a necklace or another bracelet if the bracelet was long enough. And then the bracelets could connect together and you could make a necklace. So if you have um, and if you have a decorative toggle, it could lend itself to that. Um, so I think that's cool too, like if you wanted to do that. Now, if you like the look of bare soft flex wire, since it does come in colors, you could definitely um, you leave an exposed wire, um, you know, and have it attached like so. If you like the exposed wire look. I know some people don't like exposed wire. I think it looks nice, but um, and it can be cool if you have a colored wire. Um, but if you're like, if you're not into that, then obviously that's not going to work for you. But you could, there's all different kinds of ways that you could add more to this bracelet if you wanted to. Um, in theory, you could do a whole strand of these and then just leave the beads loose like that. And they can have a lot of movement and play when you're wearing those. So there's options if you want to make them more complicated or if you want to make it more simple. It's up to you. These are the building blocks, the building beads. Um, and what you do with them is up to you. All right. Let me flip this around. Um, I'm not in love with how they make it so hard to do that, but... Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you all again. In today's live, let me get a little bit further back so you're not counting my pores. But in today's live, we made this really simple and I think elegant bracelet. Um, we went over basic stringing techniques. I know sometimes the basics, people are like, oh, the basics. I want all the fun techniques. I don't want the basics. But I do think it's important for people who are relatively new to maybe go over these things because maybe, you know, I keep trying to adjust it so I don't look, you know, it looks like I'm trying to do a dance, make up some new dance move for the TikTok, but uh, I'm not. I'm just trying to get in the center of the, the camera. Um, I think that looks nice. Um, I generally stack my bracelets and I don't like them to be super, super de duper loose or too tight because, you know, you can't have it too loose because if it's too loose, it'll come off. And if it's too tight, you, it will be hard to, one, it will be hard to put on. And number two, it will make it so you don't want to wear it. You know, I have a couple bracelets that I had when I was younger and they're super, super tight. And I never, never wear them because I say it cuts off my chi. Um, but this is holding up pretty good. So that's, you know, if it's not coming apart when I do that, then, then, then I think I did a good job. All right, at least construction wise. So this is what we made today. Hopefully you all liked it. Um, and yes, thank you for spending some time with me today. I hope you enjoy our Tuesday time together. William will be back tomorrow with um, some more uh, beady goodness. Um, if you, I should probably remind folks there are still openings for collaborations for my crow painting. So if you wanna get in on that, uh, please do. I started the backgrounds already, but um, we're still on track for the two to three week timeline. It takes me a while to paint. Um, and generally I like to work on a bunch of paintings all at once. So I'm giving myself a little bit of time 
to get a few more in so that I can work on them all at once instead of trying to do them one at a time. I feel like they get a little bit weird looking if I try to do that. So yeah, hopefully, you know, more folks will get them. There's a couple more that are available. And then I'm working on the root babies. Those should go out pretty soon. Uh, mystery boxes. I worked on those this morning some more um, before my meetings and fill them up a little bit more. Those should be going out um, any day now. And then what else do we have to do? Um, I think that's it. I need to go over my to-do list. Norma says, I think even experienced beaters can learn something new when watching a demo. Um, thanks. You know, I think it's one of those things where um, a lot of times the videos um, out there, the content creators feel pressure to do something new and tricksy and different and uh, innovative and amazing every single time. And the thing that I'm coming to realize is that one, not every single person who's watching has watched all the videos. So if you didn't watch, you know, you don't always have to do revolutionary things every single time because chances are uh, not everybody has seen every single video you've made. Number two, um, I think there is this kind of pressure, internal pressure that we put on ourselves to be, um, you know, not to be too basic. Nobody wants to be basic. Um, everybody wants to be, you know, artsy fartsy or the savant um, or the one who's like leading the path. The thing is, is that sometimes those videos I've found that I've done have been so myopic in their focus and so um, out there that it only appeals to a very few people. Um, and like some of our GBEs that I've done, I've tried to put like all these techniques into them. And what I'm starting to realize is that Sometimes it alienates people, I think, when they're a little bit too technique heavy um, and that there's like a ton of stuff in that one video and it's like almost too much. So what I'm kind of learning, and hopefully you all enjoy this, is that I can revisit different ideas and it's okay. And I can try things out again and it's okay. I can simplify the videos and it's okay. One of the videos, one of the people commented and it really stuck with me is they said, you know, I am a new beater and I don't have those tools. Um, and I could never make those projects with the tools that I have. And it really struck a chord with me because um, up until very recently, I didn't have a lot of these tools either. Um, and so I don't want to exclude people. I want my videos and our tutorials to be accessible to people and reach a broader audience um, than just a very select few people. Um, so I've been trying to think about that whenever I do my videos so that one, they're affordable and number two, you know, you, you can adapt these things to your own styles. Because some of the stuff that I was doing was very specifically my style. And that's all well and good, but it was hard. It was a little bit challenging to make it your own, if that makes any sense. So hopefully you've noticed these things and these changes that I've made to the videos recently. It seems like forever since I've been on doing one of these videos. Um, but yeah, hopefully you all like them still. All right. Well, I think that that's enough. We've been on for about an hour and a half now. 
Um, I've enjoyed spending time with all of you out there. I hope that you have an abundantly creative evening and are having fun. Um, if you are out there and you are struggling, we are sending you some positive energy and loving light. I know that that can kind of sound woo-woo, but I'm a little bit woo-woo anyway, so I'm still sending it, even if you think it's baloney. But for me, I want our community to be happy, healthy, and creative. So stay creative, y'all. Keep making. Oh, and if you do make anything, post them in the design challenge group. I'm really terrible about plugging the groups and different things like that. But it's a really wonderful group. And if you enjoy sharing your work, this is a wonderful place to do it. The link is right here. Um, I can't add the hyperlink to the comments because obviously I'm using my phone right now. Um, but if you do make things, add it to that group and we'd love to see them. I should say also that we have a ton of kits left from Kitapalooza. So if your wallet was kind of stretched and you kind of had to pick and choose, there are a lot of different ones that are still left over and they're lovely. I'll show them to you real quick. I'll show you how many kits. And this is just some of them. All right, let me flip this around. All right, there's my junkie pile. We have so many kits, y'all. These are all the ones that didn't sell. So hopefully you all will enjoy those. Like, I love this kit. Uh, those bright, verdant colors. Um, this one, so, like, honey. It's like a bag of honey up in here. Um, this one is so dreamy. So, and this one's earthy. I like this earthy business, kind of neutrals. That has some polymer clay beads by me. Um, but there's lots of kits left. So if you um, want some, like this one, I have a ton of this one left. I don't know why. I guess some of the shapes are more challenging. And there is some stuff in there that you're like, oh, and if you don't like snakes, there's like kind of a snakeskin pattern. Um, I see a couple of folks. Um, Terry says, and congr congratulations on all the positive feedback you received from Snag. Thanks. Terry says, I have been making Tila bracelets, but you don't sell Tila bracelets. Blame Candy Cooper. It is her fault. I like Tila bracelets. You know, when Tila bracelets first came out, people used to sell those like hotcakes. So, yeah. Um, Suzanne says, I love the ones I got. Ordered again today. Well, thank you. We so appreciate it. Terry says, very organized. Well, we try to be so that when Barb has to pack things up, it's not, uh, she's not like crazy like looking for stuff so hard. Like her area is super tidy. I don't know if we've ever showed it to you, but it's over there. Um, but yeah. All right, Norma says, great as always. Thank you. All right. Well, this side's not very organized, but you know, it is what it is. You can kind of see the background there. But thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate all of you. We are grateful for all of you. Thank you. We could not do this without you. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and hopefully you all are having a wonderful and creative evening and we'll continue to do so. All right. Well, I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.